Mic check. One, two, three, three, two, one. Welcome to the first episode of We Don't Quit 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it through 2023. Despite still coming out of COVID, inflation, the economy's not doing so well. We have an election season coming up. Got two wars going on, Ukraine and Russia, Israel, Palestine, just all kinds of stuff going on in our world. And I'm not going to touch on any doom and gloom. If this is your first time tuning in, this is a channel, unlike most of the channels that are out there today, that is spreading goodness and a positive message. And I want to help you out. In order to help you out, we got to talk about some things that are not so great to figure out where the problems lie. But on We Don't Quit, we're attacking your physical well-being and your mental well-being and dis discussing topics that might be taboo or cliche in a group of people. But I think these topics are issues that a lot of people think about, including myself, and a lot of people are looking for answers. So without further ado, this episode is going to be about victimization, the victim mindset. So it's 2024, New Year's just happened, and what a, what a lot of people do on New Year's or leading up to New Year's, they create resolutions. And those re resolutions range uh, in a wide variety of things from uh, fitness to finance to goals and aspirations in your current job or becoming an entrepreneur, possibly moving your relationship in a new direction, whether that be a relationship with family, friends, a loved one. And people set goals and we know through stats that it only takes a matter of months before you fall off, those goals fall off. Now, first, let me say this, I am not getting on the train of people that are posting stuff on social media, like, oh, like people that go to the gym already, they're like not going to the gym for a week because all the newbies are going to be in there. It's going to be chaos in the gym. I think that's the wrong mindset and the wrong message we should be putting out. I think anybody that steps foot in the gym or a new realm in their life at the new year, it at least shows that they're trying. Because at least those people made it to the gym. Some people create resolutions, they get super hammered on New Year's Eve, and they never even start step one toward their goals. So for you men and women that made it step one, you joined a gym, or you signed up for some kind of workshop that has to do with your job or entrepre entrepreneurship, or you joined a book club, uh, or whatever the case may be, Congratulations to you. Now, let's talk about the two things that can occur when you set a resolution. The first thing that could occur is you could smash your goals day in and day out and become a changed person and meet all your goals. And let me tell you, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Without a doubt, it's not going to happen. So for all of you that are scared that you're not going to reach your goals instantaneously, you are not alone because everybody is in your same boat because nobody is going to achieve their goals without any roadblocks because all meaningful goals aren't a 30-day challenge, like a 30-day no drinking challenge or a paleo or a whole 30 diet. Those are all fun and fine and good, and I've done those before, but they're only temporary. So these big goals that we're talking about, the goals with your lifetime of fitness, the goal of a job change or working your way up the corporate ladder in your current job or becoming an entre entrepreneur, these are goals that are take going to take years and nobody makes it through unscathed. So that should give you confidence and some peace of mind that you're not alone. So the second outcome is that you hit massive hurdles and you have self-doubt and you start questioning your reasoning and your mindset of why am I even trying to obtain these goals? It's much easier to just go back to the way things were 
and just kind of coast on in life. Well, here's where that road splits into two. So we've already identified that road one or outcome number one is not achievable. So now everybody fits into outcome number two. And now that road forks and it forks into two things. It forks into the person that is going to be resilient and they're going to hunker down and they're going to realize that there's going to be bumps in the road or you're going to become person number two, which I don't want you to become. And what we're going to talk about and how not to become that individual is people that start to not achieve their goal or not achieve results in the timely manner that they expected, which by the way, their timeline is skewed and their time horizon is not long enough. And then these individuals start playing the victim card. And the way that I'm going to explain this is in previous videos, I've mentioned my personal pillars. Pillars are things, everybody has pillars, even if you've never heard the term, it's kind of your morals and beliefs distilled down into three, four, or five, a handful of things that as long as you have those things on lock, you know that you are on the right track. So for me, I use F4, which is faith, family, fitness, and finance. And if you've never seen any of my videos before, don't let me scare you away with the faith part. I'm not a Bible thumper. I'm not going to beat you over the head with a religious stick. Faith is a can be in a non-religious context, um, a belief in something great, a greater outcome that has already occurred. If you are religious, that's great. You can put that in the context of Western religion or whatever religion you uh, believe in and a higher power that's helping you on that road to reach the desired outcome. So let's break down each one of those pillars and talk about how a person with a victim mindset might fall into a trap that is going to lead them to January, 2025, starting all over again, where you are right now, where you could succeed in the year 2024. So let's talk about faith. To reiterate, faith is the idea in a non-religious context that something good is going to happen and you are going to achieve an outcome that is desirable, more desirable than the position that you're currently in. And what happens when you get the victim mindset is you have all these ideas and things in your head around New Year's, the people with New Year's resolutions of reinventing yourself, all the things that you don't personally like about yourself, whether you have some bad habits, some bad vices, um, some distractions, you're on your phone too much, drugs, alcohol, pornography, uh, just just naturally bad habits. And those bad habits could be in your mental too. They could just be whenever you come up against adversity, the first thing you do instead of looking at that ad adversity as a challenge and enjoying the process of the challenge, you immediately see adversity as a brick wall. And all of a sudden you start, why is this brick wall in front of me? The world is against me. Everybody's conspiring against me. Nobody's here to help it's me versus the world. And then you lose that faith. You lose the faith in something greater happening. And then that is directly stems from your mindset changing, which let's say on New Year's Eve or January 1, you were just firing on all cylinders. You woke up when your alarm clock went off, you ate a healthy meal, you hit the gym, you journaled, you did a cold plunge, whatever, you know, the the trend of the day is, and everything's great on January 1st, but as the days and weeks start going by, little things start to drop off. You hit snooze a couple times. You're not going to the gym every day. You're not journaling anymore. You find yourself eating the same old garbage that you were eating before. And then you look in the mirror and instead of looking at yourself and questioning your own actions, you start to play the victim card, which would sound something like this. 
I don't have enough time to go to the gym because my work schedule is just too busy or I have a newborn or I already have multiple kids and their schedule is too busy. I get to bed late at night. That's why I'm hitting snooze in the morning. The reason my nutrition is not on point is because it costs so much more to eat healthy food and it takes more time to make a healthy meal instead of just stopping and get fast food. And you start working your way down this rabbit hole, the, this chain of woe is me to try and justify why you're not doing something when in reality, it's all you, it's all your actions. You are choosing to watch TV or doom scroll on your phone for an hour before bed which causes you to be more tired or get less good quality sleep. Therefore you hit the snooze button in the morning, which leads to you not making it to the gym or not having time to make a good meal when you could have meal prep the night before, or you spent Sunday doing Sunday fun day, watching football, watching the game, you know, drinking all day to close out the weekend when you could have spent an hour or two prepping for Monday of work, which would have taken a lot of load off your plate on Monday. So you would have had less stress on Monday and you could have hit the gym with a clear mind saying, Hey, I already got a jump start on the work week so I can enjoy this hour of the gym. And then when I get to the office, I'm already way ahead. So don't play the victim card. Now let's move to family. So faith family and with family, I'm going to say slash friends. So family and friends, look, with a new year, it's time to take full stock of the people that you surround yourself with and ask yourself, honestly, is this person in my life a value add or are they a value suck, like a vacuum? Not that these people suck, but you hear this time and time again in uh, podcasts and self-help books. And it's, it's so easy for human beings in our primal nature to feel comfortable around the people that we've surrounded ourselves with for years. And those people that you've surrounded yourself for years, which might be what you consider your core friend group, they might be unhealthy. They might be toxic to your goals. And I'm not saying, hey, get rid of them, just discount them. Like I've heard people say that before and it's like, no way. Like if you've been friends with somebody for five or 10 years or longer and they just happen to be like a booze hound and they love to go out, they love to drink on hump day on Wednesday, they love to go out on Friday, Saturday and have a Sunday fun day. No, that doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them. That just means you have to assess what value they're bringing to your goals and then structure the time spent with that individual in a manner that's conducive to reaching those goals. So if you have a friend that doesn't understand, so the first part of that is you have to verbalize to that friend your intentions clearly. And that could be on a Saturday while you're drinking beers. Why not? And tell them, hey, there's a couple things I'm trying to turn around. I'm trying to get a little more fit. Uh, I'm trying to eat a little bit more healthy. So that means, um, I'd love to come out and have a beer with you on Friday night or whatever, but on Saturday and Sunday, let's set up something a little different instead of meeting at the bar for college football on Saturday or NFL on Sunday and spending four or five hours drinking, like let's record those games and let's go out for a hike. Let's go ski. Let's go mountain bike. Let's hit the gym. And then after that, let's go back to the house and let's go make a healthy meal and let's go watch that game and eat a healthy meal. That's what I do. That's my hack. I think football games take an extremely long time for the amount of game you're actually watching. And you would be surprised if you record the game and just watch it using fast forward through the commercials, like that four hour game turns into like an hour and a half and you have so much more left of your day that you can do things with. So all of these black and white binary hacks that these hacks on the internet are trying to tell you in social media, like get rid of all the fluff, you know, be hard all the time. 
I disagree with that because you have to have a balance in everything. And if you don't have balance, that's why most people fall out of their resolution anyway, because life becomes too difficult. You can't just eat chicken and tuna and drink water all the time and hit the gym seven days a week and never have any fun unless you're David Goggins and think that that lifestyle is going to work. It's not. You're going to just, you're going to crash and burn in 30 days, 45 days or 60 days. So you have to have a nice little balance in there and give yourself a break every once in a while. But getting back to the point of making it clear to the people you hang out with where your goals are. So when you don't show up for that party or that event, because there's always something going on, they might say things like, oh yeah, so-and-so, you know, they're at the gym again. Look, man, they're kind of saying that anecdotally. I don't really think people are that big of haters. And because really in their head, what they're saying is they're saying, I should be in the gym. I shouldn't be drinking this these many beers. I shouldn't just be eating all this fast food all the time. And people usually hate on what they gave up on. So if they already gave up on their resolution, they're just saying hateful things without you around just to try and make themselves feel better about their lifestyle, which is probably shitty. So we covered faith, family, and friends. And now to fitness, which I just pretty much covered, so I don't have to go um, through it in depth. But to get back to the victimization card or the victim mindset, fitness is a lifestyle. It is not a trend. It is not a 30-day fun challenge with your friends or a 30-day paleo or a 30 day, whatever the fuck it is. I hate those 30 day challenges because all that stuff means is that there's an end point and that's not the way fitness should be. Fitness should be long. It's a long game. And so people that are selling you that you can get in shape. And I've mentioned this on so many other videos, so I don't want to go in depth on it too much. All that 30 day stuff is bullshit straight up. Straight up, I can tell you, I've been working out for over 20 years of my life. I have gained weight, lost weight. I've done cuts. I've done half Ironmans. I've done CrossFit. I've done bodybuilding. I've done MMA. I've done anything under the sun that you can think of. And all those things, I didn't pogo around. Those programs, I was like, this year, I'm going to focus on this. I usually do things in six months to a year time frame because you can't really tell what it's doing to your body or how good you're getting at whatever you're trying to do unless you're doing it for that long. So when people give up at 30 days, I'm like, you weren't prepared anyway. You weren't mentally prepared. So you have to mentally prepare yourself for the long run so you don't play the victim card of being in the gym for 30 days after leading a sedentary or non-gym life and being like, man, these pounds just aren't coming off. I'm never going to be in shape. Oh, it's in my, it's, it's my body type. It's, it's my, it's my family. This is totally genetics. I'm just, I just can't lose weight as I get older. All that is bullshit. It's all nonsense. And once again, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself the hard questions. Am I eating right to lose weight? Do I understand what a caloric deficit is? When I go in the gym, am I in the gym for an hour just willy nilly doing bullshit? Or am I hitting it hard for 40 minutes, really making it worth it? Because time in the gym doesn't mean results. I could go in the gym and get on a bicycle and pedal for two hours a day with a heart rate of 100 BPM and jack and shit would happen. Exactly. So, you know, the HIIT workouts are great. Um, If you got to be in an environment where I love to work out by myself because I'm a self-motivator and I like to listen to my music and get in my own head and that's my alone time. But if that's not you, take a class. I'm not hating on anything that's out there as long as you're doing it. F45. Orange Theory, Barry's Boot Camp, whatever you can think about, that is like a no brainer. You just go in there and do what they say. And as long as you're uh, mixing good nutrition with that, you're going to see results. So do not play the victim card of this isn't going to work for me because it's not my body type. That is all in your head. That is not the way science and physiology works. If you eat healthy, have a caloric deficit and work out properly, you will lose weight and you will gain muscle mass 100%. Be real with yourself. If you're not getting the results, it's on you. 
So lastly, let's hit on finance real quick. Everybody wants to be rich. I get it. I want a Lambo too. But, you know, it, it's a tough world out there right now with money. Everything just seems to be going up almost on a daily basis, whether it's a gallon of milk, a beer, gas. We all know what's happening with mortgages right now with interest rates. It's really easy to think that you're never going to be successful and get the amount of money that you desire. And just like fitness, I think that that's nonsense as well. I think you have to look at fitness and, or excuse me, finance in the long term and really hunker down and make a schedule the same way that you'd make out a workout routine and start thinking about money in versus money out. Ooh, this sounds a lot like a caloric deficit, right? Very simple. If you take in more money and save more money, you will eventually have more money. If you invest it well, it's not that hard. The problem is, is people aren't investing anymore because I've been reading article after article about how, I don't want to say millennials because they've gotten shit on so much, but the generation after millennials, I even forget what they're called. Um, but it's like, because they think that the American dream of home ownership is dead and COVID has kind of led them to believe like, oh my God, we could be locked down at any time. So say la vie, live and let live. Like I'm going to just spend my way out of this problem. Like how is it that everything is more expensive than it's ever been? But consumer spending is still through the roof. It doesn't make sense. It's completely counterintuitive. And the reason is, is because people don't care about finance anymore. They don't care about actually looking at the money they make, looking at all the bullshit subscriptions they have. Uh, and not, not all of them are bullshit. I mean, I can't live without my Amazon Prime and Spotify and the gym, right? But when you rack up 20 of those like a month and you have all these subscriptions and they cost, they used to cost like $7.99, $8.99. Now you're paying $20 a month. You're talking thousands of dollars a year with all these subscriptions. And you ask the average person, how many subscriptions do you have? They don't even know. They'll say like three or four when in fact they have like 10 or 15. So people aren't tracking their stuff anymore. And, and we've gotten caught up in this world, this Instagram world of, it used to be keeping up with the Joneses. It used to be that 30, 40, and 50-year-olds were keeping up with the Joneses with big things like houses and cars and stuff like that. But now keeping up with the Joneses has gone to the lowest level of people making like 30 or 40K a year and still going out and buying $500 or $1,000 purses, $300 pair of shoes, um, fast fashion, just like revolving their entire closet every six months, guys and girls, it is not sustainable. You don't need all that bullshit. You need to get back to the old methodology of thinking, which is have less stuff. Don't buy super expensive stuff. If it is more expensive or way far more expensive than, the, than it's utilitarian value. And then take the rest of the money and save it in something that is going to create growth. Even if you're talking bonds or CDs at a very low uh, rate of return, um, if you don't know anything about the stock market, don't play the stock market. Put it in an index fund. If these terms that I'm talking about, uh, such as return on investment, interest rate, CD, bonds, if you don't know what an index fund is, you need to get your ass on Investopedia right now and start looking this stuff up because the earlier you save, the more money you will have in the future. You do not want to start this intellectual journey of finance at the ripe age of 55. You'll end up being broke. I just read an article about how far will a million dollars take you if you retire at 65, 25 out of 50 states. That's half. That's half of the U.S. You will outlive that million dollars before you die a million dollars. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. If you think a million dollars is a big number for retirement, not anymore. You're going to find yourself as a Walmart greeter at the age of 78 or something like that, unless you invest now. So read books, get smart on that stuff. Stop thinking that you're not going to be wealthy because there's been a zillion people that have gone from flat ass broke to millionaires. And it's not the people, the people that are flashing this money on Instagram and on TikTok and whatever, that is the 1%. Just out of curiosity the other day, because I just kind of got familiar with what OnlyFans is. I'm obviously not on it, 
Um, but <clears throat> I started seeing all these Instagram accounts with follow me on OnlyFans. I'm like, what is this? I know I'm late to the game, but I read some stats on OnlyFans. One percent, the top one percent of OnlyFans makes eighty percent of the money. So that means unless you're on the top 1%, which if you aren't right now, that ship has already sailed, you are not going to become some kind of OnlyFans, Instagram, TikTok star and get rich. The people that are flaunting all that fancy shit out there, that is the 1%. That's the lucky 1% and God bless them that it worked out for them, but it's likely not going to work out for you. The same way my videos don't have hundreds of thousands of views, even though I'm spitting this knowledge, which I think is way more important than watching somebody do a stupid ass dance in their kitchen. <coughs> but I digress. Don't be a victim. Take, take control of your life. 2023, just like 2022 and 2024 is going to be the year for you if you want it to be. And if you don't want it to be, and you're only going to make it till February 1st or March 1st, and then play the victim card, you're going to find yourself in the revolving door of new year's resolutions that never come to fruition. But I'm betting on you. I'm hoping for you and I'm praying for you. So I hope everything works out. Hope you appreciate the video. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.